much. Is that showing? All right, we're going to try that again. Welcome everyone to the sunny Gold Coast in Australia where we're going to share with you the Your Inspiration at Home Mega Christmas Party. And we've got our lovely directors. Um, we've got um, Kristen Kyle, um, Melissa Roberts, uh, Trish Winner in, in the back getting ready, <laughs> Gina Moore, Kelly Saunderson, and holding the camera, Esther Minglis. <laughs> Welcome everyone, and we're gonna show you a typical Australian Christmas here in the fantastic uh, Gold Coast, known for its sun and um, surf and great fresh food. So we still, are technical difficulties still going on? Oh, we're all good, okay, perfect. Well, we're gonna start with some Australian traditional plastics, of course, um, twisted in the eye away. So um, what we've got, who are we gonna start with first? <laughs> All right, so Trish is gonna share with you um, a family classic, so go ahead, Trish. So we have two things in our house at Christmas time. We have turkey and ham. So this is our Yaya turkey. It's using Autumn Harvest, and it's as simple as just getting a deboned turkey and sprinkling this over the top. So just put a little bit in your hand and just sprinkle it over the top like that. And that's it, it's as hard as that. You pop it into the oven and cook it for an hour and a half. As soon as that comes up nice and caramelized, it's good to go. Um, you can use this in a couple of different ways. You can put it on your potato, you can put it with chicken and fish as well. Um, and you can also uh, put it into a Ziploc bag with anything um, and some oil and squish it together. So anything else you'd use Autumn Harvest for, Trish? Um, roast dinners. Yeah. Roast um, chicken and I would say probably fish. Okay, excellent. It's also really good on root vegetables. So your parsnips, your um, potatoes, the um, um, sweet potatoes, those kind of root vegetables, carrots, it's great as well. Awesome, wonderful. Now, what else? Who's next? Kristen? Oh, oh Melissa. All right, so Melissa's going to share with you. Um, in Australia, I have to tell you, um, one of the things that when I first moved here from Canada was the amount of food served at Christmas dinner. And, you know, in Canada, you might have turkey, you might have ham, and same with in the U.S. In Australia, if it's protein, it's on the table. <laughs> so, and in many different ways, it might be barbecued, it might be in a cold salad, you know, um, cold uh, seafood salads are really popular in Australia at Christmas, because you have to remember, for those of you who are um, tuning in from North America and from Europe, um, it's hot here. We're right in the middle of summer. We're in, um, for those of you in Celsius, 30 degrees Celsius, which is um, 100, 110 um, uh, Fahrenheit. So we're not roasting a lot of dishes in our kitchens um, typically. Um, but one of the things that we do, we love in Australia is lamb. So Melissa's gonna show you a quick Aussie lamb roast. Okay, so all I'm going to do today is take the Mediterranean oil and I'm going to drizzle it over the top of our roast lamb. So generally in my house when I do roast lamb at Christmas time, I'm generally doing it on the barbecue, but we didn't have a barbecue here today to show you, so I'm just going to do it this way, which is just as good. So I'm going to use the Aussie roast today because this is my absolute favourite one to use on any of my roasts. So I will put it on roast beef, I'll put it on chicken, I'll use it in shepherd's pie, I'll do an anything and everything with Aussie roast and what I love about this the most is the flavor people can smell this Aussie roast coming well cooking from outside like my husband walks in the door and he absolutely loves the smell of the Aussie roast cooking so anything and everything for that one so that's pretty much all I do just put only a small amount over there just push it in and chuck it in the oven one of the other things that I've also been known to do with roast lamb though Colleen is I've actually drizzled the caramelized balsamic vinegar over the top of that as well and it just gives it that little bit of a 
yummy yeah, flavor the sweetness yeah. yeah yeah it's absolutely delicious so i really love that and for those of you who are looking for multi-purposes to your um spices one of the great uh, uh great ways to use aussie roast is in um uh, potatoes so you do an oven roast potato again use the mediterranean olive oil on top um, then sprinkle it with the aussie roast pop it in a baking pan and um, there you go, you've got a real, almost like a Greek style, uh, very herby roast potato. Um, fantastic on chicken, you can use it in stuffing as well. So a great, a great all rounder for Aussie roast. Absolutely. Awesome. awesome, well thank you, I can't wait for dinner. Um, all right, so now we've got Kristen Kyle who's going to um, share with you one of her family uh, traditions year after year. Yeah, so in our family we do a lot of seafood at Christmas. Uh, we always have a snapper on the table with um, other prawns and calamari and all that kind of thing. But the way I do my snapper is I stuff it with um, a breadcrumb, um, celery, some of the country uh, onion and chives, and some lemon, West Coast lemon fish myrtle. So that gives it an amazing flavour and it goes right through the fish. So I just I um, bind that together with a little bit of butter and just pop it inside. Mm. That looks fantastic. The of the fish. Um, so you just drizzle a little bit of butter over the top of the fish and pop it in the oven for about half an hour and it's ready to go. Excellent. So about a half an hour and then you're going to take it out and um, you've got to do a special sauce yes. with it as well. Yes, I've made a Creole, I'll be making Creole sauce to go over the top of the fish and it just gives it that added bit of flavour. Now can you put this on the barbecue as well? Yes you can. And would you because put it in tin foil? I'd put it in a, a foil tray mm -hmm. um, and um, I'd lay some foil over the top and the, the lid closed the barbecue. It may only take about 20-25 minutes in the barbecue. Excellent because Australians Christmas is spent outdoors. <laughs> it's not yeah. gathered around a fireplace it's usually outdoors um, out on the deck oftentimes um, Christmas dinner is eaten on the deck um, and people going in between courses, one course after another, back and forth into the pool, playing, you know, uh, volleyball or um, pool sport, and then back um, to finish the next course in Australian uh, dinners. All right, so back over to Trish. Trish is going to share another um, fantastic one of her favorites. So this is a bit of a take on our traditional family um, baked ham. So this is pre-baked, so it already comes like this. And all I've done is score the ham and put little cloves of, um, little cloves of cloves <laughs> in between. So I'm just gonna sprinkle some orange juice over the top. And that helps it to caramelize a little bit because that's what you want on the top. So this is a, a pre-smoked ham, which we're, you're gonna bake to really give it that glaze yeah. um, caramelized on top. Okay, and then we're going to use the honey, cinnamon and orange. So this is um, a take on my grandmother's recipe. So she used to use um, orange juice and um, maple syrup. So I just use this instead. And you want to use quite a bit of it because you want to really caramelise the top of it. You want it nice and brown. Um, and is it, do Australians make this sometimes the day before, so they have it as cold yeah, ham? Yeah, so you have ham and eggs for breakfast with it in the morning, so it needs to be done Christmas Eve. Fantastic. And then you can use this when you're making French toast at Christmas time as well. Awesome. Um, you know, the North American we use the ham um, and or turkey. And so this is a, but never the same way as the Australians do it for every meal of the whole holiday season, whether it's breakfast or sandwiches or in a salad um, later or a quiche or, you know, um, of course at Christmas dinner with your six proteins on your plate at the same time. I love it. I love it. Awesome. All right. Well, thank you, Trish. Now, for those of you who are tuning in at an actual in-house mega party, you know that November is fantastic time to host a party because it is double host benefits. So you get whatever level of um, sales at your party, you get to double the 10 or the 15 percent. Plus, you get to double your half price items. Now, and a great thing to do is use your half price items at the mega party because you'll be able to take half price of our two mega party packs which I'll tell you about in just a minute. 
Um, we've also got um, some special draws. So don't forget, go ahead right now. We're going to do the draws at the end of the mega party. Um, make sure that everyone's had a chance. I know we've had a lot of last minute registrations for the mega party. So everyone has a chance to win um, one of three prizes for each one of the mega parties. So um, send an email to uh, YIAH mega party at yahoo.com and uh, we will go through those and we will announce the winners later so now we've got another thing of course um, with all of this protein in the australian uh, christmas you need to have some um, salad so kelly saunderson what are you making um, so this is a salad that uh, my sister-in-law came across and has shared with us and is now one of my grandma's favorites so if i turn up to christmas dinner without this i'm in big trouble so um, it's just an apple and pear salad, and you know, disaster chef me, I didn't even bother going with the knife to chop up the lettuce. <laughs> so this is just a cross lettuce. We've got the um, apples and pears that um, I've cooked, they chopped up a little bit too early, so they've just turned that little bit brown. You know, that's the way oh, it goes. Oh, they taste the same. That's right. Oh, yep. Exactly. <laughs> Um, so both of them in there, just tossing it through um, some cranberries, so dried cranberries. So here in Australia you've got the um, craisins from the dried fruit section in the supermarket. So lots of them because they're my favourite. And then really simply, a little bit of our Asian dukkha. So, oh, so just sprinkling that through. Oh, that makes me hungry. <laughs> nice and fresh. And then... Our beautiful brand new Sauvignon Blanc balsamic vinegar. So, so with all the sweetness um, and oh, the, the the sweetness of the pear and the bit of tart of the green apple, um, you're going to have that combination of sweet and tart and the cranberries, the great nutty flavor and a little bit of ginger in there to top it off with a, um, a, a, a quite a you know tart or dry Sauvignon Blanc vinegar is a perfect um, ending. Beautiful and so quick and easy. Mm. It smells wonderful. If you've got smell of vision, can you yes, all smell yes. it? <laughs> I'm going now to go and eat this by myself. <laughs> awesome, awesome. All right, so who's next? We've got Gina. So we're going to come on over to the stove top. Oh, we're going to go over to Trish, sorry. Over to Trish to the other side. <laughs> back in, back up again. <laughs> And Trish, what salad are you making here? This looks like a real Aussie salad. Yeah, this is a pumpkin and spinach salad. So because it's hot in Australia, we have to put a different take on having roast vegetables. So we do um, some baby spinach leaves and then we've pre-roasted the pumpkin, which we're just going to... Pop and how did you roast the pumpkin? For a lot of people who are, you know, roasting pumpkin might be a new thing for them. What oh. did you guys do? You so we just um, cubed it up and put a little bit of Mediterranean olive oil on it. Of course it was Yaya Mediterranean olive oil. Um, and then we popped it in the oven for about 45 minutes. Was there some salt on it? There was our salt grinder, which is um, smoked, smoked orange, orange chili, chili and garlic. garlic. Yeah. Awesome. And then we're just gonna put some toasted pine nuts on top. Just like that. Wow, look how easy that is. I think I could even make that one. And then some caramelized, um, balsamic oil vinegar yeah, <laughs> <laughs> Whoops. and you know what right now if you're in Australia is a fantastic time to stock up on your caramelized uh, balsamic vinegar because we do have a special going on and, and talk to your consultant about it but you can buy the caramelized balsamic vinegar in the 500 this is a 250 ml jar so you get it in the double size jar and there's a special price and there's also a special way to get that even at a bigger discount um, as well. So talk to your consultant about that and they'll hook you up. Awesome. We've got dinner almost ready. <laughs> All right, over to Gina to the stove top and she's going to make a really unique Christmas um, take on chicken in Australia. So I have the perfect thing that goes with the salads. So you've got these beautiful salads out on the table and you want something quick and easy to make. And this is very traditional as well um, because it's barbecuing and we all love a good barbie in Australia. So, um, very, very easy. I'm using um, our honey lemon myrtle glaze 
and our beautiful Mediterranean um, olive oil. Now with this, it's just as simple as um, soaking those um, kebab sticks in a bit of water so that they don't burn when you're cooking them on the barbecue. Um, marinate your, um, so using your glaze. Now a lot of people have said, how do I do these properly? They're a powdered honey. Um, the sec my little secret to this to get a really nice glaze is to mix your olive oil together with your glaze and also a little bit of extra honey. So I put in a bit of Capilano honey, uh, powdered um, honey lemon myrtle glaze and a little bit of the Mediterranean olive oil. So it's as simple as that. Um, it doesn't need to be marinated for long. You can literally, it's a glaze, you can literally put it straight on and straight in the bar on the barbecue. Um, so these ones are ready to go. You can hear that lovely sizzle. And the lemon myrtle honey glaze is one of those things that you can use on vegetables as well as your protein. So if you wanted to do your beautiful honey glazed um, vegetables, you can also do that with your honey glazed carrots, um, honey glazed um, sweet potatoes, and you know squash, zucchini. You can do that with any of them and actually do your roasted veggies. So the Christmas, if you're wanting to have that more traditional um, hot cooked meal, then the honey glaze is the perfect addition to your protein as well as your vegetables. So really, really easy to use and so delicious. And do you know, what other products would you use other than honey glaze? Because, oh, you know, you that's, can... that's just one of our many products that will go fantastic on a chicken kebab. Absolutely. So my my special favorite for um, for chicken on a kebab, if you're doing kebabs, is that what you mean? Doing mm -hmm. them on kebabs? Yep. Um, grill master and caramelized balsamic. Um, any of your spices, any of your seasonings you could use um, on the meat. So we've got a lot of our seasonings that work really well with protein. And depending on you know people's taste buds, if you want something hot and spicy, you can even use our dip mix range and use like Louisiana Creole um, smokehouse barbecue was really nice on the um, on chicken as well. So we've got plenty of them, plenty, plenty. Just depending on what your level of heat is that you like. Awesome, wonderful. Well, we'll come back to you to see how those are going. Beautiful. Wonderful. All right, now who's, oh, first of all, I did have a question about the hashtag. So yes, we're still having the hashtag contest. So um, hashtag Yaya Mega Party um, and also hashtag Yaya Christmas Mega Party. And we'll get you involved in the hashtag promotion as well. We will check that at the end of the segment. So for those of you who are watching live, you're going to get that um, bonus opportunity to be involved in the hashtag too. So um, we've also got our mega packs, and our mega packs for the Aussie Christmas, we have both a savory mega pack and a sweet mega pack. And the savory mega pack, which you're going to see used um, or have seen used already, is the Thai olive oil, the autumn harvest, the Aussie roast, and of course classic herb and garlic. Because who can't, you know, prawns and herb and garlic just go so well together in an Aussie mega Christmas. Um, for those of you who are watching in the U.S., yes, you can still take part of the Aussie Mega Christmas Packs as well. And you want to pay special attention to this because this is the only way you will get blood orange guava mango uh, balsamic vinegar prior to Christmas is by buying the next pack I'm going to announce, which is the sweet um, Aussie Christmas Mega Pack. And that includes OMG, also known as Blood Orange Guava Mango Vinegar, the Rose Sugar, the Black Forest uh, Dukkha, and the White Chocolate Powder. So um, you can buy those. They're already um, consultants and um, customers are already loaded in our back office and ready to go that you can start ordering them right now. So um, for those of you who are a hostess right now, this is a great opportunity to get those at half price. All right, over to Kristen Kyle, who's going to share with us another classic Australian um, uh, way of serving potatoes. Hey, um, potato bake is one of the main dishes, uh, vegetable dishes that you find on many, many um, Christmas Christmas tables. Usually served at dinner time because it's a hot dish and the days are far too hot. Um, it's a classic potato bake, so all it is is potatoes that are spin scalloped. Um, today we've used a wasabi, giving it a little bit of a, a change around. Uh, usually I'd use a herb and garlic, but today I've decided I'm going to use the wasabi and chive, chive um, dip mix in it. Um, all I've done is mix a tablespoon through with a large um, thickened cream. I'm not sure what they actually call it in America. I'm, that's, um, oh, you just use a whipping cream in whipping America. Cream. Yeah. Whipping cream in America. 
tablespoon of the wasabi and chive, mix it through and pour it over your scalloped potatoes. A little bit of cheese on top and we've sprinkled it with a wasabi dukkha to give it some extra flavour and in the oven for about an hour. And it's really great because the wasabi is not hot so even though it sounds like it's a real exotic um, blend. It's perfect for potato baking. You get that lovely crunch on top. Um, for those of you who are listening from North America, Washington, North America, it is also called scalp potatoes. So um, that's what you know it as. And what other um, dip mixes or spices would you use in that? You can use pretty much anything. You can use the um, the Creole, the Louisiana Creole. You can use veggie, uh, herb and garlic, bay of Bengal curry. Pretty much any of the spices that Yaya has, you can use in this potato bake. So you can make a different potato bake every day if you want to and it'll be completely different. That's right and um, I know that Minnesota and some of the northern um, states and provinces in Canada you'll want to use our dill and onion that will be one of your yes. favorite wines for a potato bake. Um, if you're more um, wanting a Mediterranean the Tuscan um, is amazing the Tuscan um, dip mix is fantastic in potato bake as well. We've chosen one that kind of goes with the fish that goes with the salads that goes with um, you know pretty much everything we've got um, on today's menu so thank you very much thank you all right who we've got next oh Gina all right again this is it come on over see Gina, what Gina's preparing here how are those kebabs going Gina beautiful beautiful now on the barbecue they would take a lot less time obviously because um, your barbecue gets nice and hot and they get lovely and caramelized on the outside from the honey that you've been using so they're going really well just remember it's chicken you need to keep turning it make sure it's all nicely browned through but aren't they looking great i so wish you had smell of vision these just smell amazing so while they're cooking off to the side i'm going to show you how to make the most incredibly yummy little um i guess snack that you can put out on the table at christmas it's called my nuts and bolts now it's very, very basic ingredients and you're going to look at this thinking that is just bizarre. Um, but these are the Chinese crunchy noodles. They're dry. Um, you don't cook them. They're actually lovely and dry. And if you can see that, they're crunchy, they're crisp. So really, really easy. Just in the supermarket, you'll find them. This is a breakfast cereal. This is actually called Nutrigrain. It's, a, um, it's an Aussie thing. So maybe for those looking watching today from Canada and from uh, from Northern America, you're probably thinking that's just bizarre, but it's a breakfast cereal. And then we also have a dried fruit and nut mix as well. So you can actually use um, just plain nuts and mixed nuts if you want to. And you know, Christmas time is also very traditional with nuts, the walnuts, the cracked fresh nuts. So you can use a lot of those, um, a lot of those types of things. All right, we're burning something here, so I'll just turn that down really quickly. All right. Ooh. <laughs> oh no, <laughs> I'm just going to put that off to the side for a minute, Kelly. All right, so now traditionally I would do this in a wok, um, but you know, we're very limited with our resources here today. So I'm going to show you how to make up this nibbly mix. You can serve it hot the way I'm going to do it, but my tradition, and I'm letting you in on a little bit of my family, family secret here of what I do with my kids for Christmas. Um, we make up our beautiful little nibbly mixes like this and a lot of different things that you can make with Yaya um, and we put them into jars and we actually give them away as gifts to our family and friends. You can see I've just overheated that just slightly. I'm going to give that just a moment or two because I'm about to put Bengal curry mix into that and that's going to get way too hot so I'll just cool that for a moment. Let that sort of settle down. <laughs> Almost need to do that, don't I? Is that on? Yes. Beautiful. All right, so adding Bengal curry dip mix. Now you can, again, you can add any of our spices to this as well, um, but this is a beautiful flavoured mixture. I'm going to put in the mixed nuts and fruit into there. And our Nutrigrain and our cereal, uh, sorry, our noodles over the top of the cereal. Put in a good couple of spoonfuls I'm a bit generous, generous with that, so I always go that little bit extra. And then give it a really good stir, because all you're doing is just tossing that through with that little bit of oil. You may need a little bit of extra oil in that. I don't really want to, oh, it's really burning my hand. Now, a little bit of extra Mediterranean oil. Gives it a beautiful garlicky flavour as well. And then just lightly coat that. Okay, it doesn't need to be cooked very much at all. You're really just lightly mixing that through. 
and then serving it up. So you can see here I've just shown you a traditional way that my family and my children, my children are often involved with this, we do this every year, and we just simply fill the jars up and give them a little bit of a special touch with that little Christmassy feel and we also have little labels on and, and who we've, we're giving them to for Christmas. So my children give this to their teachers um, and their teachers always receive a little handmade hamper from the children um, at Christmas time. So that's a, a lovely idea and at Christmas here in Australia we also have families that just tend to drop in on you unannounced. Um, as we do, we always say, how, say hi to our friends at Christmas and drop in. And this is something that we have ready made, sitting there at home. So when family and friends come over, we give them a jar of this. And, um, and now we're spreading the yaya love that way. So a um, beautiful way to share it. Can you, can you share some of the other um, mixes that you can use with that as Absolutely, well? yes. You can do um, a lovely one is the um, Tuscan pesto dip mix. I really like that for that more Mediterranean sort of flavour. Um, you could also do a nice hot spicy one. So for those people who really like something hot, put some Louisiana Creole or my husband's favourite. It tends to be a guy's favourite, I think. Um, I'm finding anyway is the Smokehouse Barbecue. And it gives it that lovely, you know, that lovely um, bite, but still packed full of flavour. And it's an unusual thing because as you're eating this, you get that combination of sweet and savoury. Mm -hmm. And it's just a beautiful mix to have on the table where people can nibble instead of the boring salted peanuts that you can put out. We can give them something amazing with the eye products. Excellent. Now, have you ever done uh, any of the sweet ones? So with the... Um, uh, with the sweet dill cup? Yeah. Or, yes. Or sweet dill cup would be perfect. Or a sweet vinegar combination, or even um, the glazes. Sweet glaze, Absolutely, the, the glazes honey. Would actually, the yeah. honey glazes, a cinnamon, cinnamon twist, twist yeah. um, or even the um, orange honey maple. Maple, mm -hmm. yeah, that one would be beautiful as well. And actually, do a sweet combination and have that out with your desserts. You know, we're not really big on having a lot of desserts in our house, but we have sort of more traditional sort of things, I guess, if we're going to. But that's perfect to have a little nibbly mix out for dessert once you fill up on all that protein. Right. <laughs> awesome. All right. I think we're going to see um, Kelly with some prawns. Yes. Hopefully, with a bit of luck, they'll be edible. Do you need those two? Or? No, they're All right. Let's yep. move these out of the way for you. So. Um, so straight off our recipe website, so you can find our um, Your Inspiration at Home recipes that are shared by consultants and customers as well. Um, this one is actually by Kate Morris, so one of our consultants. So just some prawns that are peeled, we've left the tails on, a little bit of a quick egg wash, and then they've just been sitting in the key lime dooker here, so um, with lots of coconut flavours there, so really, really lovely. Hopefully my... No, that's you. Which one? No. Yes. <laughs> um, so, fry pan's nice and hot. So a little bit of heat, I'm going to add, so as in heat as in bite, with the Thai inspired olive oil. So that just goes straight into the fry pan. And then we're just going to fry them off really quickly. Prawns don't need a real lot of time, so hopefully I don't burn any. And um, the directors and directors and qualification here and our spice curator will be able to enjoy them in a little while when we're all done. So. Wonderful. And I don't think there is, I have not been to a Christmas in Australia without prawns. Yep. Um, or jumbo shrimp, for those of you who are watching in um, North America. It is, it's hard to find them if you leave it to the last minute. Um, it's really hard to find prawn in Australia. It's actually, um, I would be in big trouble if my mum was able to watch this because she likes them just cooked. Then we sit down, we peel them. Um, my husband, he's going to kill me for telling this story. His first Christmas with us, he was, couldn't, didn't know how to peel a prawn. So he was from the southern states where it wasn't quite as big. But prawns are our, are our family tradition. So definitely. Uh, yeah, amazing. And these are quite small um, yes. compared to a lot of prawns um, that you'll get just in time for Christmas here. Wonderful. Well, we'll let those go and um, we'll head over to see some dessert now, I believe. All right. So this is the classic Australian um, dessert in, uh, again, remembering that it's hot. In Australia, you want something light, something fruity, something sweet to end the meal um, versus what we tend to have in North America, which is the plum pudding with the caramel sauce on it and 
you kind of just go to sleep after. So this one gives you that wonderful light Christmas um, sugar high. So over to you, Melissa. It does, and it is seriously a true blue fair dinkum Aussie Australian dessert at Christmas time, let me tell you that. Especially in our house. My boys in my house, including my hubby, absolutely love this. I made this uh, not long ago just to experiment to see how it would all work together, and it was an absolute delight. So what I've done now, to make the actual pavlova, you need to get your eggs and separate them. So you have your egg whites and your yellows. You whip your egg whites with the sugar until they form a pink. And you can add a little bit of vanilla essence in there as well. So once you've done that, you just kind of put it all onto the baking tray and then chuck it in the oven and it creates a nice little meringue type feel like this. So then all I've gone and done is whipped up some cream and I'm just going to add a tablespoon of the white chocolate powder to this just to give it the flavour. So I'm just going to put that in there. Now this white chocolate powder, I absolutely love this as well. I add this to uh, white chocolate when I'm making white Christmas as well. Um, I... And what's white, white Christmas? Because no one, the only white Christmas in North America is the snow on the ground. So you've really got to remember that we've got North Americans that have no clue what you're talking about with white Christmas. So please okay. share that one. So white Christmas is a, it's a little bit different to the traditional one that I make because I myself personally am not a huge fan of coconut and white Christmas has lots of coconut in it. So in my house I melt white chocolate and I put some of the white chocolate powder in there as well just to give it that extra bit of flavour and I will put things like um, little mini marshmallows, I will put Turkish delight in there, I'll put you know almond slithers and little different treats almost similar to a um, Rocky Road type chocolate, but I do it with white chocolate, and then over the top I sprinkle the lemon myrtle white chocolate, chocolate dukkah as well. Yeah. Oh, nice! And it is absolutely divine. It does not last in our house either. So all I've done is just put through the white chocolate powder, and I'm just going to simply pour this over the top. Now, some people coat all of their pavlova, like the whole lot like, around the sides and everything, but I'm not going to actually do that. I like to just put it over the top. So while that's sitting there, getting some amazing flavour into there, I then take the strawberries. So I've pre-cut pre these up, but has anybody ever tried the blood orange, mango and guava vinegar? Marinated oh, strawberries in that is amazing. absolutely. I can eat to them out of a bowl. For. You don't oh, need yeah. to add anything else to it. Totally, totally agree. And I actually do. I always cut more and then eat the rest <laughs> afterwards. But uh, one of the other things that I use this in is a uh, champagne as well. So generally at Christmas time we have lots of bubbles in our house. Um, lots of everything. I probably put a little bit too much in there, but it's oh, the beauty of all never enough. Exactly. exactly. <laughs> totally agree with you there. So I'm just going to uh, stir those up. and get them really coating. And while they just sit there for a second, I'm actually gonna pour a glass of champagne. Oh, nice. So I think that we've got the, I'm not sure which sugar this is, yeah, the rose right. sugar is rimmed around our beautiful champagne glasses. So I'm gonna pour some. Now I actually do this at my demos as well, Pauline, in mm -hmm. the evenings. I will rim the champagne glasses with mojito sugar or the rose sugar. And it just gives it that really sweet taste before the champagne comes through. But then when we add, a little bit of, well, I actually put a cap full because I love it, so. And I know that there's a lot of people that do love this, so. I put a cap full of that into the champagne as well, and it just gives it a champagne cocktail. You can also put your strawberry in there, or marinated strawberries in there, or anything like that as well, but it's absolutely beautiful. It presents well, very simple, very easy to do for that champagne cocktail. And you could do the non-alcoholic version as well using either Sprite or in Australia called lemonade, um, soda water as well. And I know there's a couple of consultants probably watching now that are uh, pretty much addicted to the OMG just in a glass of water as a quick um, refresher and spritzer. So, um, and then there's others that I think actually have been told, I've heard that they actually will drink it a tablespoon at a time out of the bottle. So. Uh, we, de we definitely have uh, many uses for the OMG. Do you know what else is really, really good with the OMG, Colleen? And, you know, I may get myself in a little bit of trouble here, but I have to be completely honest. 
vodka and lemonade is absolutely divine. I've actually had it with Bacardi and lemonade as well. So I, it, have, you know, I have heard of that drink. Yes, yes. yes. <laughs> <laughs> it's absolutely divine. So if you do like a little bit of a drop of vodka instead of um, champagne or anything like that, then you can put a little dash in there as well. It keeps it nice and sweet. So... Go ahead. I was going to say, and one of the other ones that a lot of people are serving in drinks now is the new tamarind um, balsamic vinegar as well. Um, and for those of you in the U.S., you'll get it in uh, early 2014. For those of you in Australia, I know that it is um, fast becoming another um, vinegar drink. All right, what are you going to awesome. do next? So now, just to finish it off a little bit and give it a little bit more character, I'm going to actually just add some of the Black Forest Stooker over the top of this. I'm just going to sprinkle it over the top. I have to hide this product in my house <laughs> because my husband takes this seriously out of my kit and he will put it... Oh, I don't even need that much. But he puts it um, with ice cream and... Um, oh, that looks fantastic. Uh, what do you well. call that other stuff? Natural yogurt. And mm -hmm. he mixes it together and puts some of this in there together and... It, it's just absolutely divine. Now, this isn't the only way that you can do this. You can use mixed berries. You can use any sort of thing. I've just used strawberries today because that's my favorite fruit, and I love the taste of the blood orange mango guava with that. But like I said, this is a huge uh, Australian dessert over here, and it's absolutely delicious and absolutely divine. So bon appetit to everybody. Wonderful. Now, um, also... Uh, kiwi fruit and passion fruit are two other really great toppings that you could use any of our vinegars with um, to, to marinate or soak in those as well. Yeah. Now let's see what we're doing over here. What are you, how are you guys going? Great. Working through? I think we're going to finish with that. Okay. All right. So I'm about to um, put some, some of my Creole sauce on my fish to finish it off. So it's about halfway cooked now. And I've, what I've made up here is just a Creole sauce using um, some tomatoes, some um, country onion and chives um, and also a tablespoon of creole with a tin of diced tomatoes. And that's what I've done. I've simmered it on the stove for about 20 minutes for the flavours to develop. And I'm just going to mix some of it over the fish. Fantastic. So for those people who don't want the um, creole sauce, so you can still have um, the dish, some of the fish without it, and those that really want that kick of the fantastic flavors of Louisiana Creole dip mix, they've got that um, in there. Now, what else did you put in that? Um, so it's got some celery, some mm -hmm. um, country onion and chive dip mix, a tablespoon, uh, a tin of diced tomatoes, and the tablespoon of Louisiana Creole, and a little bit of lemon juice. Wonderful. And all of these recipes will be available later today um, on Facebook. So we will get these up and running for you on Facebook. So you won't have to wait. Our lovely directors will spend their afternoon um, getting all of those recipes up there for you. I can't wait. That looks now, fabulous. This will go back in the oven for another half an hour. Mm -hmm. And then it will be ready to put on the table. Yum. Wow. We're going to have a treat tonight. All right, Kelly, where do those prawns go? Um, the prawns are all done and they survived the fried fish. didn't quite so much as everybody's... Um, yeah, those look yeah. fabulous. Yep, so everybody's de-smoking us and airing out the plates because I did burn the fry pan, but all done beautiful there. Also fantastic with our wasabi dukkha as well. would we'll make a really great crust with them. Perfect. But using the key lime dukkha, mm -hmm. we've also got some um, chocolate balls here which again was inspired off our website, so the chocolate raspberry truffle balls that are done by another one of our consultants, Jo Burnett. Um, but we've twisted them up a little bit. Um, we've turned them into rumbles because here in Australia, we, um, it wouldn't be Christmas without a good rumble. So using the chocolate, almond, uh, chocolate raspberry truffle, uh, in there some LSA so which you can also use almond meal as well so it's just a seed mix a couple of tablespoons of um, honey and then I've used two to three capsules of the Bundaberg rum so just rolling them up so into the bowl and then again into the key lime dukkha so nice and beautiful get that coconut on the um, outside Done. Mm. Are, are you going to steal one, Colleen? <laughs> <laughs> so not quite so disastrous, those ones. We can eat them. Those are lovely. Excellent. And I'm surprised that's the, all the rum that's in them. Holy smokes. 
Mm. Yeah, okay, maybe there was an extra cap full in these ones, but that was um, encouraged by Trish Winner, so. Wonderful. <laughs> she, she leads me astray regularly. <laughs> All right, well, it is a very Aussie tradition, these rum balls. And usually the person making the rum balls does it the day before because by the end of the rum ball session, I think there's more, less rum goes in the rum, doll, rum ball than the actual um, person who's making them. So, yeah, it's one for there, one story. for you. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> um, I went to a, a Christmas dinner one time and everyone was saying that um, Grandma had made the rum balls and forgot to put the rum in them. She was doing the, <laughs> the, the rum herself. So very Australian, fantastic stories. Well, again, uh, if you're a host of a mega party, congratulations, you're going to be able to get the half price mega party packs. And I'll just go through those again. The savory pack is the Thai olive oil, the autumn harvest, the Aussie roast, and the herb and garlic. The uh, sweet pack, is the OMG and um, to all of our American friends that's the one you want to buy um, because the only time you're going to get OMG. Uh, rose sugar, the black forest dukkah and the white chocolate powder. Now I know that everyone's just waiting till the end of our, our mega party today to know what our joining offer is. Um, we're joining at the mega party until 10 p.m. Brisbane time uh, tomorrow so that's Sunday if uh, when you decide you want to join sorry Monday I'm forgetting my days um, you want to join uh, your inspiration at home as a consultant with either a business kit or an executive kit uh, join with the November special so you get the oils and vinegars or in the US the oils additions to those two kits and you can get you'll get one of the two mega packs so whether that's the sweet or the savory you'll get that for free as well so again for those of you in the U.S., perfect time to join because you're going to get OMG um, possibly in your uh, Mega Party Pack for free. Don't forget to hashtag your inspiration or Yaya Mega Party or Yaya Christmas Mega Party on Facebook and we'll enter you in the draw. Don't forget to um, uh, email us at yayamegaparty at yahoo.com and we'll get you in the draw for three prizes. So the first prize is onion, country onion dip mix. Uh, the second mega party draw will be for Aussie roast. The third mega party draw will be for the black forest dukkah. So you want to get in and everybody who is at those parties that, um, that is drawn for the mega party will win that. So each one of those guests that are drawn will win that as well. Well, great. I'm so glad that you invested some time with us and learned some things about the Aussie Mega Christmas Party and, and the way that um, Australians celebrate Christmas, which is so vastly different than um, we do in North America. And we just wanted to, did you have a shot of our table as it is so far? So you can see we're, we're really beachy, um, enjoying the water views of the Gold Coast, the bit of surf that's happening at the moment. And this is a very typical Australian Christmas scene in Gold Coast, Australia. And thank you very much again, everyone, for attending from all over Australia, all over the U.S., all over Canada, and for those of you who were able to attend from um, the U.K., we thank you very much, and we look forward to seeing you at the end of November for our traditional North American uh, Christmas party. Thanks again, and bye for now.